Hey guys, welcome back. This week we're going to be discussing herp ID and more specifically on venomous snakes. The first one out of the four venomous snakes of Texas is going to be the copperhead. Now this snake is going to be found mostly in the eastern region of Texas, however it could be found pretty much anywhere in Texas. It's not as lethal as everyone makes it out to be. Um, you can identify it pretty easily by its copper color. It's going to be pretty unique to this species of snake. Um, it's pretty easy to identify. I would be super careful looking underneath any kind of brush or any kind of coverings that are on the ground. That's definitely where these are going to be. The next snake is going to be the coral snake. This is going to be much more of a coastal snake. It kind of spans around the entire Gulf Coast area. Um, the really similar snake to it is going to be the milk snake. The easy way to identify this snake is going to be by the yellow, red, black pattern on the coral snake. Its similar part, counterpart is going to be the milk snake and that one will not have its yellow to milky white color touching the red. Easy way to remember this is going to be the red touch yellow, kill a fellow. This one is going to be a very shy snake. It's very, very unlikely to bite you. However, if it does, it is going to be the most, le most lethal out of all of these snakes. The third snake in Texas is going to be the cottonmouth. Now this is also known as the water moccasin. It is going to be somewhat lethal. It is commonly found in eastern Texas. However, it is very easy to spot one of these in any kind of permanent water regions, such as a lake, pond, river, or just really any kind of a marshy area. Now the picture on the right is going to be an actual water moccasin. And the picture on the bottom shows why they are called a cotton mouth for their bright white mouth whenever they show it to you. This is going to be one of their defensive techniques, just showing you the inside of their mouth and their fangs is supposed to deter you. Now this also has a very similar counterpart. The left picture is going to be a common water snake. This is a non-venomous snake. The easy way to tell these apart is going to be first by their bands. A water moccasin is going to have very wide, close together bands along its back. How, as compared to a water snake, which is going to have further apart bands that are going to be a little skinnier. The last group of snakes that are going to be in Texas are going to be rattlesnakes. There are nine typical rattlesnakes that are going to be in Texas. The first two are going to be the common western diamondback. This is going to be the one that everybody knows. It is going to cover most nearly all of Texas. Easy way to tell what it is is going to be the black lines that are going to stretch from its eyes to the back of its jaw, as well as the black and white stripes that go along its rattle at the very base of its tail. The next step rattlesnake is going to be the timber rattlesnake. This one is going to have a chevron pattern that kind of goes all the way from its head back to its tail. It also has a black tail and is usually going to be anywhere from a brownish to a yellowish color. This is going to be found in the lowland forest or any, near any kind of bo body of water. The next snake is going to be a mottled rock rattlesnake. This one is fairly easy to tell because of its white creamy co color and it's also going to have these mottled black bands along it. This snake is going to be found in any kind of mountainous areas or anywhere in West Texas. The next snake is a banded rock rattlesnake. The easy way to tell these apart is the huge color difference. The banded rock rattlesnake is going to be a much rockier kind of grayish gunmetal color. Um, it is going to be in the extreme western tip of Texas. The next group are going to be the black tail rattlesnake. This one is going to be in southwestern Texas, kind of around the San Antonio region, and its entire black tail and dark black color is going to be pretty unique to that specific species. The next one is going to be the Mojave rattlesnake. This one is going to have thin black bands and a sandy kind of color all the way down it. It is going to be found on rock ledges around central Texas all the way out to west Texas. Next is the prairie rattlesnake. The prairie rattlesnake is going to be found in the grassy western plains. It's easy to tell because it's going to be usually about a greenish gray color and it's going to have round spots all the way down the middle of its back. A similar snake is going to be the western Massasaga. 
Now this snake is going to be a light gray brown color with splotches on the top of its back, but the difference here is that these splotches are also going to be along the sides of the snake. This is going to be found mostly in the middle of the snake, and it really seems to enjoy swampy, marshy areas. The last rattlesnake is going to be the desert Mossasaga. Now this one is going to be easy to tell from the western because of its lighter silver color, and it's going to be pretty significantly smaller than the western Mossasaga. And it is going to be found in the Trans-Pecos region, the Panhandle, and the Rio Grande Valley. Some pretty common questions. One of them is going to be, what is a pit viper? This is just going to be a type of, of a venomous snake. It's really easy to tell because of this huge cavity that you're going to see right here between its nostril and its eye. Now, a pit viper just means that it's going to have a cavity right behind its eyes between them that is going to be a heat sensing. This is basically just so that the snake can help to find any kind of warm-blooded animal for prey. How do you tell if a snake is venomous? There's multiple different ways to be able to tell what it is and what it isn't. Most of these options are going to include looking at it very up close to try to find it from a very far away. It's mostly just going to be knowing what kind of venomous snakes are in your region and being able to identify those. And if it doesn't look like that snake, it's probably non-venomous. Um, up close options can be looking at their pupil. These are not always going to be consistent per species but typically you're going to be able to see that in a non-venomous snake it's going to have a much slender head, a round pupil, and if you look at the bottom belly of the snake it's going to have overlapping scales along the midline. If it's going to be a venomous snake you can typically see slanted eyes, you're going to see a pointed snout and a much wider head, as well as straight scales all the way along its underbelly. Lastly, what should you do if a snake bites you? If it's venomous, absolutely nothing. Do not try to suck the venom out. Do not try to restrict blood flow. Do not put ice on it. Do not try to put an incision near it to relieve the pressure. Leave it alone. If you do any of this kind of thing, it will just make the situation worse. A really helpful tip can be, especially if it's on your hand, immediately remove any kind of jewelry or clothing that's going to restrict the sight because this is going to make it much, much worse. Now, if it is a non-venomous snake, you don't have much to worry about. You can typically put pressure on it, just wrap it up. You might put a band-aid over it, don't worry about it. If it does seem to get infected, you may need to go to the hospital, but for the most part, it will just go away on its own. All right, well, thank you guys for joining us today.